trip. So we know she's by the exciting Denon Platina, whose juveniles are, are really setting the tracks alight. We know that she's trained by Mike DeCock. We know that she's ridden by Keegan DeMello. These are all significant plus points. She's 20 to 1 in the market. I think that's overpriced. I'm not suggesting that she's going to beat Mrs. Geriatrics, but I would think that White Pearl is one of those that are going to go close to chasing her home and an obvious inclusion for exactors, trifectas, and quartets. But let's be in the camp of the unbeaten Mrs. Geriatrics. We don't like to see good horses getting beat. She goes around the corner here at Hollywood Bet's Gravel. It's new territory for her, but she's nicely drawn and with Richard Faree's expertise and Sean Terry will have a cherry ripe for the Magical Lady Syndicate. So, Warren, let's go all in with Mrs. Geriatrics. All right, uh, we're all in with Mrs. Geriatrics. That's the one that we like. We're going to bank her and we're going to be with her. She's an unbeaten horse and we're hoping that she'll remain unbeaten after Saturday. Durban Golden Horseshoe, race number six on the program, which goes off at three o'clock. It's a group two for a half a million rand and the field is up on screen. Tab, track and ball gaming, some wonderful visuals and some wonderful slides that have been put together for you. Uh, and the sixth race now, Graham, I found this a very competitive race, whereas in the previous race, obviously a horse like Mrs. Geriatrics jumps out at you. In this race, there isn't one for me that jumps out at you, but in saying that, Sandringham Summit keeps me interested. What price is Sandringham Summit? Sandringham Summit is around seven, eight to one, so easy to back the clear favorite is number 13, give me another chance. He, of course, has got course and distance experience in the gate crash estates. That will stand him in good stead. But in that race, he was drawn one. In this race, he's drawn 13. It's not going to be easy for give me another chance from the wide outside, from gate number 13. Is he good enough? Perhaps he is. Keegan DeMello rides the sun and give me the green light for Mike DeCock. He's short in the market. He's short in the market. So. Many guys will be thinking, well, this pick six is tough. We're going to have to bank a Mrs. Geriatrics. We're going to have to bank a give me another chance and go wide in the other four legs. But like you, I'm interested in Sandringham Summit because David Nivenazen rates him very highly. Like the favorite, he's a son of give me the green light. He's a brother to Eden Rock, who was a very talented horse on his day. And Sandringham Summit, who's easy to back, as I said, at around seven, eight to one. Uh, has obvious claims. He's better drawn, he's engaged seven. Guy Gibson, many talking about Guy Gibson because of his form behind Lucky Lad. We've seen horses running behind Lucky Lad, coming out and winning in good company. He's well drawn in gate five, he's a son of the exciting but defunct Lancaster bomber. Guy Gibson is short, in fact, second favorite ahead of Sandringham Summit. And then there are a few others, but to be honest, I would be surprised if the winner doesn't come from one of Guy Gibson, Sandringham Summit, and give me another chance. Maybe, maybe the improving Hawk Bill could have a say in the outcome because I think the further he goes, the better he'll be. Uh, but uh, it's going to be tough to beat. Give me another chance. Graham, just before we uh, uh, move on to the next race, just two points with this uh, Durban Golden Horseshoe, the Group 2 event. Number 14, Fire and Flames. I'm not suggesting that Fire and Flames can win, but I mean, they're all in the race, they've all got a chance. He's been so good to me, this horse. I'd never turn my back on him. I think he could be a quartet inclusion. And then I spoke to Mike Miller, and this is most important information to the public. Number one, Winter Games. They really like this cult. They like him as an individual. He's got tons of ability, tons of talent. He's progressive, etc. So don't leave out number one, Winter Games, though you do rate him. Winter Games is clearly above average. He's beaten the subsequent winner, Dr. Faustus. He was soundly beaten. Well, give me another chance in the gate crash of stakes. But I remind you again, on that occasion, give me another chance was drawing pole position. He's now got gate 13 to contend with. That will allow Winter Games to get a lot closer. Another worthy of mention is the only filly in the race, Golden Tatiana, because she's got solid form in feature race company. But perhaps we're starting to stretch ourselves a little bit. So if we were to focus in on the principal contenders, Fire and Flames, I take your point. But he's drawn place even chance. worse than give me yeah, another yeah. chance. More of a place chance than a winning one. More of one. a place chance. Sandringham Summit, Guy Gibson, Winter Games. That's the proverbial not so short list. I know it's a bad draw, but I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to give him another chance to beat Winter Games, Sandringham Summit, Guy Gibson. Maybe that gate crasher form over this course and distance. Same course and distance is going to stand up for us.
The seventh race, of course, is the Hollywood Bets at Durban July. We're going to skip that race for now, and uh, we're going to be joined by, as you know, Muzi and Samanga to take us through the Hollywood Bets Durban July field. So we're going to move on swiftly to race number eight on the program, eight of 12, which is the Ridgemont Garden Province stake, Stakes. It's a Group 1 event for 1,250,000 over 1,600 metres. Is it as easy as I'm seeing it? I make it an absolute boat race between six Desert Miracle and ten Princess Keller. My lurker for the back end of quartets to run maybe fourth from the deep draw is Tipsy Tarragon for an outside place chance. But in the pick six, I'm not going more than Desert Miracle and Princess Keller. It does look an absolute boat race between Desert Miracle and Princess Keller. Your long shot, I'll come back to those two in a moment. Your long shot is 13 Tipsy Tarragon. There's no lack of depth to this race. It's a high quality fillies and mares, wait for age, grade one event. As is the case with the Hollywood Vets Durban July, this is also a grade one race. It's great that Christophe Sumillon is here to reunite with Desert Miracle. We saw him ride Desert Miracle to victory over Captain's Ransom in the Majorca Stakes on midday. So Desert Miracle and Christophe Sumillon they get on well together. But Richard Ferry and Princess Keller, they also get on extremely well. Now, your long shot, you said, was uh, Tipsy Tarragon. I was having a chat to Samungo, who's going to join you along with Muzi for the chat and the discussion around the main race in a few minutes' time. He quite likes give me a shot. He said to me, Graham, for trifectas and quartets, tell the public out there while you're going through the, the other races, that I quite like number seven, give me a shot. We know that on her very best form, she's very talented. Uh, she's nicely drawn. She will, will take to the 1600 meters here at Hollywood Best Gravel. So that's another to consider for your trifectas and your quartets. And of course, Humdinger from a good draw is always running above expectations. And the other to mention are Golden Hostess and Marina. Uh, the two runners from the Candace Bass Robinson stable. Remember, Marina ran a place last year. Golden Hostess doesn't know what it is to run a bad race. But those are the horses for your trifectas and quartets because we are both expecting first and second to be between Desert Miracle and Princess Keller. Absolutely. Well they I stand out. They do stand but out. But nail your colors to the mast. Are you in the Desert Miracle camp or are you in the Princess Keller camp? You put me under big pressure because uh, I was originally in the camp of Princess Keller in a big way. But since having spoken to the connections of Desert Miracle, they are very upbeat. They're very confident. Both connections, ladies and gentlemen, connections of Desert Miracle and Princess Keller are hugely, hugely, hugely confident. So to answer your question, yeah, I, I'll stick with Princess Keller. I give I'm, the edge, I'm, I'm I give, like you, I give the edge to Princess Keller. Uh, but clearly, for all exotic bets, you have to include both number six, Desert Miracle, and ten, Princess Keller. And this year's running of the Ridgemont Garden Province Stakes, from all exotic bets per perspective, whether you're talking about the jackpots, the place accumulators, or the pick sixes, this is a key race. We cannot get an upset here. I remember all those years ago when the entire crowd shouted the great Bella Bella home. She was a whole country's banker, the worst nightmare for the bookmakers. And Anthony Del Pesce rode her that evening. She was everybody's banker, and she came storming into the lead. And I'll tell you what, there was more noise at that moment than there was earlier for the Hollywood Bets Durban July. So Desert Miracle and Princess Keller, one of them must win. If neither wins, We're out. there's going to be silence, yep, absolute, absolute silence, silence yep, absolutely. after the running of the eighth okay. race. And again, a good feedback from Samanga. Give me a shot you include in your trifectas and quartets. Uh, I like a little bit of uh, uh, tipsy tarragon for back-ended trifectas and quartets, but we're not expecting anything else besides Desert Miracle and Princess Keller. Ninth race is the Post Merchants, uh, Graham. It uh, goes off at half past five. It's a group two event for a half a million rands worth of stakes. And uh, there is the field on uh, the screen for you to have a look at right now. The favorite uh, is Thunderstruck. And I'm not saying Thunderstruck can't win. Of course he can win. And he's got to go into all of your bets. But my, what price is Sergey? Sergey is around seven, eight to one. That's my first choice. I'm going with Sergey from the Brett Crawford stable. Louis McMottua gets the ride. Yes, they are drawn awkwardly. I understand that. But he nearly won the Group 1 last time up at Hollywood Bet Scottsville. That was a huge effort. And he's always been a lovely horse. 
Sergey is a terrific sprinter. He was amongst the early entries for the Hollywood Bets Durban July, which caught us all by surprise. Uh, but he's an outstanding sprinter, and he ran a superb race the other day when finishing third behind Gimme a Prince, just, just, just behind Thunderstruck, who ran second. Now, like you, it was nice to see Thunderstruck bounce back to form. He won the gold medallion, grade one, as a two-year-old, over the 1,200 meters at Hollywood Bet Scottsville. Last month, he ran a cracker to run second in the Golden Horse Sprint behind Gimme a Prince over that very same course and distance. How he's going to go here, around the corner, at Hollywood Bet's Gravel, I'm not certain. This is a favorite. I might have egg all over my face after the race. This is a favorite, although Christoph Sumion rides for the powerful Sean Terry stable. This is a favorite I'm prepared to take on. And I think the post merchants is ripe for an upset result. You're entitled to like Sergey. Cosmic Highway, big chance. If Pearl of Asia was drawn better, I would say he could emulate his shock win in the Mercury Sprint a few seasons back. Pearl of Asia can be deadly when in the right mood. And his last run behind uh, Gimme a Prince was a most encouraging effort. Then you've got Sheldon who's in form. You've got Cold Fact, Gobsmacked, who can, uh, can improve. And whoa, 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 it's a difficult, difficult race. Luck in running is going to play a role. The pace is going to play a role. Thunderstruck possibly sets the standard on his best form. But like you, I'd rather be in the camp of Sergio. Even Silver Operator Pico, they've all got chances. This race, I don't like. I don't trust this race. I'm going to go wide. Every single punter structures their bets differently and looks at form differently, etc. You said that you could possibly have egg on your face because you're happy to take on Thunderstruck. I'm also happy to take on Thunderstruck. We could both have egg on our face. Uh, maybe some of the other punters are of the opinion they want to take on Desert Miracle and Princess Keller. This race, I'll be looking for big value and a bit of an upset. That's why I'm going for the longer shot, Sergio. I'm like you. I'm happy to play to beat Thunderstruck. So there we go. The post merchants, your favorite is Thunderstruck. But is he vulnerable? First time at the track? Who knows? Yep, he certainly can win, but he's not going to be a banker. That's for sure. The 10th race is the Compendium Insurance Brokers Handicap. It's a listed event over uh, 1,600 meters. And uh, this is the uh, 150,000 Rand race, proudly sponsored by Compendium. And Graham, <clears throat> Silvano's dasher from the Brett Crawford stable, Keegan DeMello, uh, certainly has to be respected. Uh, a horse like Captain Fontaine, he's got all the ability in the world. And I was so thrilled to see that hugely improved run from Quasi for sure last time. He's a very, very smart horse that Peter Musket has made no secret that he really rates this horse to be able to go to the top one day. For my money, there are only four horses that can win. It is a handicap, so going on dangerous territory when you try to narrow down a very competitive handicap on a competitive day's racing to just four runners. Before I get there, the betting, I think, says it all. The favorite is Silvano's Dasher. The second favorite is a horse that I really have a lot of respect for, Money Heist, is co-second favorite with Quasi for sure. And then Captain Fontaine, who's out at 10 to 1. The only four horses I think that could win the race are numbers 4, Money Heist, 7, Silvana's Dasher, 10, Captain Fontaine, and 12, Quasi for sure. My marginal first choice would be number 4, Money Heist. But I'm not going to leave any of those four out. My play goes around those four horses, numbers 4, 7, 10, and 12. I would be surprised if the winner of race 10, the Compendium Insurance Brokers Handicap listed over 1,600 meters doesn't come from that group of four horses. I also would like to share with the public with regards to Money Heist, that penultimate win at Hollywood Bet Scottsville was unbelievable. He had no right to win. He won testament to his ability. His last start behind Captain Bombshell was outstanding. The stable and the connections of Money Heist have made it no secret. They rate him. He's a smart horse. They're expecting a huge, huge run. So that is probably the horse to beat. Christoph Sumion has got a terrific book of rides. You know, obviously he rides Safe Passage in the Hollywood Bet's Durban July. He'll be delighted. He'll hope he'll get a good tune out of that one, and he'll be delighted to be reuniting with, uh, uh, with uh, Desert Miracle, as we mentioned. But aside from the two grade one races, he's got a wonderful book of rides. He's been given a welcome here to, to KwaZulu-Natal by, by the connections of many of the runners, and it's going to be great to see him in action. And I think that, obviously, Money Heist, uh, Atendiwe Gutler is taking a back seat to allow the European champion 
to get aboard a number four money heist, and I'm expecting a huge run from him. The 11th race, which will be the penultimate race on the card, it's the Brentford Football Club 86 handicap. It's for fillies and mares over 1,600 metres for a stake of 120,000 rand. And how absolutely wonderful to have the Brentford Football Club as part of this huge, huge day of racing in South Africa. I have spoken to trainer Duncan Howells about his runners. Uh, he's got Lucky Miss and Asiya Pambili. They're both in a very good space. He's expecting huge runs from both. Uh, must be included in all bets. And over the page, my personal fancy is number 12. I know going to be difficult from the awkward draw, but this was Hir Komi Boki keeps me interested and keeps me interested a lot. Well, Hir Komi Boki has got some decent form behind her name, uh, but she should be held by Valeria's dream. She should be held by Asiya Pambili, especially as she's drawn right on the outside in gate number 12. It's not going to be easy from there. I'm really bullish about Asiya Pambili. I was chatting to Anthony Delpesh, and I said, so where's the winner going to come from on the day for the Hollywood Syndicate? And he said, we might have to wait a long time through the day until we get to race 11. But Anthony Delpesh told me he thinks that Asiya Pambili is probably Hollywood Syndicate's best runner on the day. But of course, it's got to get ahead of Valeria's dream. There was three parts of length between them when they met uh, before. Uh, towards the end of May. Valeria's Dream is in good form. Richard Free, Peter Musket, what a partnership. What a partnership. They win race after race after race, uh, do Richard Free and Peter Musket when they team up together. It's an interesting race. It's a Phillies and Mayors handicap. It's a Brentford Football Club Phillies and Mayors handicap at the 86th level. It's over 1,600 meters. It's very competitive. You know, if this race produced a shock result, none of us would be surprised because it is a competitive handicap and, uh, you know, it's, it's, there are many with chances. Uh, but I'm going to row in with Asiya Pambili. Okay, I can be with you because the stable, you tell us that Anthony Delpesh is upbeat, the stable is upbeat. So Asiya Pambili, and uh, I'm going to as well take some swingers and quartets and exactors with Hir Komi Boki. Before we go to the last race, just behind you, behind the betting counter, I thought I was seeing things. I thought that we had two new betting clocks, but it's Muzi Yeni and uh, Samanga Kamala getting ready to come and talk to us. Yeah, they're starting to warm up their vocal cords. You guys getting those vocal cords ready? Uh, because you're going to be chatting to Warren in just a few minutes' time about the Hollywood bets, Durban, July. Five million at stake. We're running nicely ahead of schedule. So you can come out of the change rooms. And up next will be Samanga and Muzi. Thank God you're sitting because you'd be dwarfing them otherwise. Uh, so obviously Warren Towers over Muzieni and Samanga Kamala. And of course, he is the defending champion. Yes. Samanga Kamala. Let's have a round of applause for Samanga Kamala, last year's winning jockey, Sparkling Waters. Come on, give him a nice warm welcome here before we discuss the last race. And uh, Samanga is amongst us here, and everybody's delighted to see Samanga and Muzi. But let's do race 12 before I say goodbye, and you introduce Samanga and Muzi. Let's go on to race 12. The lucky last, and it goes off at half past seven on a long but fabulous day's racing. Yep, and again, not an easy race to bring the curtain down on the day uh, and the evening. Uh, Dean Canamad, uh, Keegan DeMello's horse, USA's Hope. I, I, I did think he could win last time, and he, I don't want to be too hard on him. He, he nearly won. He was third, beaten less than a length to very talented Beechamwood boy. So he's probably going to be my narrow first choice. I do like Passage of Power, Pierre Stryker Stradham's ride for Robbie Hill, a very good second last time behind Beechamwood Boy. And then there was one other I thought to, uh, as a bit of a lurker, Graham, was number seven, Fateful Day, for the back end of quartets. But, but I think two USA's hope sets the standard. Yeah, just a reminder again, of course, that races 11 and 12, including this, the 12th race, the Gagazi Phillies and Mayors Merit Rated 88 Handicap, over 1,400 metres. They are on the poly track. Just to remind you that races 11 and 12 are on the poly track. Now, USA's Hope, I thought he would win last time. Yes. I was hugely disappointed and a lot poorer <laughs> after he got beat by Beachwood Boy because he carried all my hopes that day. Did USA's Hope. He's got a very neat draw at gate two, and I think he sets the standard. He does have 61 and a half to shoulder, but he's a very, very decent three-year-old by the United States, Dean Canamo, Keegan DeMello, USA's hope if he doesn't win, he's certainly not going to be far away. But there are a couple of others. Turpitz won a good race. 
Uh, last time out, or, or that last time that he came to this part of the world, Fateful Day, as you mentioned, I think is a big runner and must go into all bets. Lord Wiley pops up when he feels like it. He, he's the kind of horse that can boost the trifecta in the quartet dividends. And then Samunga. Before coming on air, I said, Samunga, give us one of your fancies amongst the minor races. And Samunga said to me, Graham, watch out for me on former gear in the last. Watch out for me on former gear in the last. I am going to end the day on a high note. So guys, we've told you straight from the horse's mouth, Samunga Kamala really fancies number 10, former gear. He rode it last time when second under a half legs behind Cheeky Laddie. So he knows all about the three-year-old son of Karari. And of course, Peter Musket really liked this horse as a youngster. He really thought high of him. And he went up in the ratings. He's starting to come down to a more competitive rating. And Samunga believes that he's going to give him a big run in the 12th and final race on Saturday. So maybe the swinger bet boxed is two USA's hope, seven fateful day, and 10 former gear. Maybe those are exactors and swingers to box in the 12th and final race. Graham, that is the 11 races that we've uh, uh, gone uh, through. Uh, and it's just uh, to give the, the viewers and the punters a bit of an idea of what we've heard and what we've heard on the ground and what we like as well. Use it as a guide. It's such a competitive card. It's such a great day's racing. Uh, you know, whatever we've told you, use it, don't use it. But it's just what Graham and I like for, for, the, for the day. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I look forward to spending the next uh, 20 minutes to half an hour with Muzi and Samunga, and of course our, our brothers and sisters that are here in the uh, uh, track and ball uh, finishing post. But please, travel safely to your next appointment. It's a big week for us. Of course, it's the sales tomorrow. And uh, thanks for your time. It's always a pleasure to go through the card with you and uh, just get safely to your next destination. Yeah, thanks, Warren. It's been an absolute pleasure being here. There's a great buzz here at the Finishing Post Bar. I'm sure you're going to love being with Samunga and Muzi. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Lovely. Thank you. We're going to go to an ad break. That's Graham Hawkins. Yes, and uh, we're going to go to an ad break. We're going to have an advertisement break, and we'll be back with you very soon. Gravel. Graham Hawkins, my colleague and good friend, has now left the building to go to another function, and it gives me great pleasure to have Samunga Kamala on my left and Muzi Yeni on my right, and I just must talk a little bit about them, because these are two young men that I've known for a very long time. I've had a privilege of watching them ride, I've had a privilege of watching them grow, and uh, just to, into two fine young gentlemen and to two fine young riders. So I think let's put our hands together and welcome Samunga Kamala and Muzi Yeni to tonight's panel. There we go. The whoop, whoop. You heard that, eh? <laughs> what we're going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to go through 
We're going to go through all the runners in the uh, Hollywood Bets Durban July. We'll start from one Bless My Stars and we'll go all the way down to 18 Pomp and Power. We'll get the opinion on, 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 uh, from our gentlemen on either side. I'll give you a quick opinion and then at the end of the discussion we'll give you some selections etc. So let's fire away then and start talking about uh, the Hollywood Bets Durban July. The very first runner and I'm going to start with Mersey first is Bless My Stars for Key Storm Investments nominee Mr. Kenneth Pillay. This is trained by Sean Terry, going to be ridden by Atendiwe Mugulva, one of the most improved young riders in a long time. Atendiwe is firing on all cylinders, gate 152, but a lot of the pundits out there, Muzi, say that a horse like Bless My Stars, this filly, although she's drawn one, is going to have it all to do. Yes, uh, I just want to thank Club Tab for inviting us, track and ball. Uh, I've got to say, a lovely crowd appearance, and uh, just thanks, guys, for having me on your part of the show. Um, just back to the photo comp, uh, the Hollywood Durban July. Yes, bless my stars. I've got to say, well done to Mr. Terry. He's done exceptionally well with this filly, um, and uh, my colleague here yeah, managed to pull off a Group One, uh, the Phillies Classic. So she's, uh, yes, she's. It's very, very talented filly. I do feel like on the on the, she could have maybe gone out for a different race. But uh, she deserves to be in the race. She won the group one and she stays w quite well. My concern is, is she getting enough weights from um, those top horses like um, What a Question, See It Again and Safe Passage. And uh, at the weight, she's very under sufferance and uh, I think she's got a lot to do. Samanga, so you've, uh, as Muzi said, group one on her. She's a gorgeous filly. She's a good filly. What are your thoughts on her for the Hollywood Bets Durban July? Uh, obviously, um, you, you know, uh, I've, I've won a group one on her, and um, she, she's, she's not one of the biggest filly, but she got a big heart, and uh, I think uh, even her last run, because, you know, um, uh, Atandira just had to understand uh, what kind of filly she is, and uh, he came and asked me, and I just, you know, gave him a copy, copyright uh, how to actually ride her. And she, you know, she came out and she, she you know, she came out and showed class. Having said, I know it's a bit of a step, uh, it's a bit of a step for her. And, you know, being uh, under South France, um, guys, I think as a, for a place chance, she's paying up to six places, you can't leave her out. And uh, she's been that distance, she's done it before. But uh, it's just, uh, I think the weight also are very important. Uh, she's getting 52. You can't live out on the places. Okay, so number one, bless my stars for Samanga. Don't leave her out in the places, and uh, she could be value for the places. Number one, bless my stars. She is a 40 to one shot, ladies and gentlemen. She's a 40 to one shot, but boosted odds here tonight. You're getting 50 to one, so extra 10 points. 50 to one boosted odds about bless my stars. When we spoke to Richard Ferry at the Hollywood Bets Durban July Gallops, and Dee's Dianant asked him in the interview, give us a score out of 10 for your ride without question. He said 10 out of 10. Richard Ferry's upbeat, he's very confident. This is Nick Johnson's horse by the United States and uh, Justin Snaith, the trainer, Richard Ferry. I'll start with you this time because I started with Muzi previously. Ultra consistent, the, Richard's confident. What do you make of without question? Yeah, Richard is uh, super confident and uh, you know, Richard has um, uh, won uh, uh, Hollywood bets uh, July, I think about uh, three times, and you know he knows this race is no stranger to these races, and he knows the uh, the kind of horses that takes to win the race, and he, if he feels that uh, the draw and the weight that he, the um, obviously without question is carrying um, is the is the horse that can handle, and you know he's a very big individual. If Richard is confident, uh, you know what we. We, we, we have to start now to actually uh, try and come up with um, uh, our plans because, you know, we're all in this race to, um, we're all here to, uh, uh, to win it. And um, if the man is confident, uh, he's, he's been there, done that. So I think um, gotta you've got to respect it. And uh, so to the guys out there, I know, um, obviously, the, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's easy point, pointing and picking. But uh, some they still have to uh, they still have to be come at the gate. They still have to uh, be placed properly and they, uh, to settle and all that. So I'm I'm gonna wait for the race day. Okay. All right. Uh, without question. Yep. I'm also in uh, Samanga's camp. I'm gonna wait and see how without question does. 
Uh, he's got a chance for me, um, but I'm not so confident with him for the, for the first choice. How do you see without question running? Obviously, um, we've got to come and guide the public as best as we can. And uh, i got to say it's one of those horses where you give them either 10 stars, 9 stars, or 8 stars. And for me, it's a 9 star, possibly a 10 star. Um, he's got a lot of positives, this horse, um, about him. He's trained by Mr. Snaith, the champion trainer. A trainer that's won, I think, the July three to four times. Richard's also won it three times. He's got a nice handy lightweight. He didn't win the, the Daily News. So he gets two kilos from the favorite in a horse, in, to a horse that we all have to beat. He's a massive, massive runner. He's got a, when I say positives, he's got someone who's going to come out the gates. He's not going to be flustered on what to do. This is a very like rough, scrimmagey race. And he's a tapo guy. Uh, you've seen in the season the results that he's pulled. Um, this, is also one of the, this is one of the main horses we have to beat. Um, he's a tough horse that I don't want to be near him. I'd rather get away from him than be around him because I think he can quicken 90% of the f almost the whole field. So classy horse. Richard's confirmed it. We are just talking to Monty about the, the discussion. That's Manga's agent for anyone who doesn't know. And we said a lot of jockeys probably wish to be on something else in the July. And the fact that Richard is happy on what he's on and he's probably the, he is like the leading rider in the country, that should give all the punters enough credit and enough positives if you like the source to go with it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well put, Muzi. If you like the source without question, go with it because there is confidence from the camp with, without question. 7.14 currently trading without question. Tonight they're offering you at extended odds 9 to 1. Time flies. Horse number three. Time flies when you're having fun. Dynasty Philly for Hollywood Syndicate. Nominee Anthony Delpesh, Brett Crawford, and Luyolo Mnotwa gets the ride. Muzi, a good Philly, but chatting to Anthony Delpesh on, on various other platforms, she's got it all to do, but she's certainly not completely prayerless. Yes, uh, I've got to say, interesting that Anthony went for this race, but um, obviously there are the sponsored races. They are the, they're the main spo they're the sponsor of the race, so it only makes sense to want to be competing in one of the most prestigious races in Africa. But uh, to me, to do, you know, last time I think she ran higher than a rating because she, it was a slow run race in, in the Wollerington, the race Manga managed to win, and being three wide wasn't a bad thing, and a lot of horses didn't get a run late in that race. So she was desperately hanging on for, she quick, quickened and desperately holding on for a second. I don't think she's in this class. This is a highly competitive field and very close. Um, to give what, what a question, half a kilo, I can't see that happening. So for me, no chance. Okay, uh, that's time flies. I'm in agreement with Muzi. So is Anthony Delpesh. He, he says that she's got it all to do. I, I'm happy to pass her by. How do you see her running? Um, the last run, um, I think um, uh, Louis had first run on me, uh, and I, I was on uh, the filly, uh, uh, Rain in Holland, and um, I, just that last little bit, it seemed like it, for me, going past, going past him, I feel that uh, he was running on empty, and, uh, you know, my filly was full of running, and, uh, you know, to, 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 to go out now, uh, 2,200, um, still a little bit of a question mark, but um, when I went past him, it feels like he was already uh, had enough, and um, nice feeling, but uh, I think it's gonna have, have to do a lot here. Uh, there, there's, some, there's some hard knockers here, and uh, obviously, you know, uh, if, if anybody is in a, a camp of uh, um, uh, Crawford, and they can, you know, they can follow, but, um, you know, this was they will surprise you. They'll, you'll have them. You'll have them at their peak, and and uh, just it doesn't work out. And then you'll sort of like um, not take a chance, and they'll come up. So um, you know the guys out there. It's, it, I think sometimes you must. They, they should just go with the go gut with feeling. Yeah, yeah. Go yeah. With your heart your yeah. Gut. All right. Time flies. Is a, a, a long shot. Forty to one. But currently 45 to 1 tonight at track and ball. You'll get an extra five points with Time Flyers as we move on to Time Flyers, a stable companion. Now, there's a lot of talk, ladies and gentlemen, about Winchester Mansion. 
Brett Crawford, Cabello, Matsunyane, a young rider who's hungry for success. He's just a talent of the highest order, is young Cabello, neatly drawn, 53 kilograms, and there's lots to like about Winchester Mansion. The prep's gone well, and the camp are very, very confident. Moose, Winchester Mansion, I make him a big runner. Do you? You know what, I wasn't so quite convinced on the source, um, but uh, obviously, you know what, you've got to respect uh, third run after a gelding. Third run after a gelding should be peak run. He's got a nice uh, low weight, a decent draw. And um, obviously, like you said, the Cabello to be nice for him is a very, very young and up and young up and coming talent. And uh, just for me, I wasn't so sure about him. You know, when uh, Apaka beat him, I was in the plane from PE to, jo to, to Durban for the KZN season. And Richard said, I'll win this race of Apaka. And they beat him and he gave him two and a half kilos. Now there's a weight turnaround for Apaka. And um, as much as the source has improved, I'm sure Ms. Uh, Justin Scott also Paka improved. So for me, I think I stand to be corrected. It could be Cabela's first ride in the July. And, um, I think you could be right. I think it could be, it could be right if memory serves as correct, Cabela's first ride. But yes. if it's not his first, he's had one or two maybe. Yes, but saying that, it's, um, he's not a horse that looks like he travels early to help him hold a uh, position. And um, if the race is a bit of a rough and being drawn on that inside and he gets swarmed for horses, I think he needs a lot of room to get unwinding and going. So I don't know if the, um, everything will run to suit him, but for me, more of a place bet than a winning chance. I prefer others. All right, more of a place bet for uh, uh, Winchester Mansion, more of a place chance than a winning one as far as Mersey is concerned. What are your thoughts, Bling, uh, with Winchester Mansion? Um, you know, Muzi have said everything. Um, I'm just worried uh, about the way he hangs when he gets under pressure. So the guys out there, you just put that in the back of your head. He does tend to, to hang and obviously sometimes they they trying to get out of it, you know. So um, that's, otherwise Muzi just uh, said it all, you know. Are you happy to go with more of a place chance than a winning one for Winchester Mansion? You know, I talk, they, they're giving up to uh, six places. Uh, the guys out there, you know, uh, it's, it's a long day. Twelve races, you need to, you need to catch something. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's horse number four, Winchester Mansion. Strong place chance from the gentleman on either side of me. And Winchester Mansion, 5.25, the extended or boosted odd tonight for you, our dear friends, is 6,75 to 1. Let's go on to Billy Bowlegs, horse number five. And Nico Kutsiotis interviewed Alec Laird at great length the other night and the other day. And uh, I never had a chance to hear exactly what he was saying. But talking to one or two of the owners, uh, owners are Laura de Haast, Mrs. S. Governor, Kay Nagendran, and the International Racing Club, Joe DeMarta. They are so thrilled to have a runner in the Hollywood Bets Durban July. And uh, as a horse, my only concern and I'll start with Samanga this time, if you don't mind, Muzi. My only concern with Billy Bowlegs, the course, the track, that's my only worry. You know, uh, so, so sometimes, you, the, as I say, sometimes they can surprise you, these horses. Uh, he's a big, strong individual, and he's, he's ran with one of the best um, of, in, in SA. And I just, I just feel... He gives, he gives himself too much to do, and the gravel being a short straight, it, it might just be against, uh, 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 being against, against him, you know. Um, this, he, stand side track, it's a long running, it takes time, and you know, you always uh, come, and, uh, come and catch them late. Um, for me, I think uh, gravel will be, will be very testing for him. With you. I agree with you, and I think he's got it all to do, Billy Bowlegs. I'm not sure he'll be suited to the track, but if he happened to win the Hollywood Bets Durban July, I'll be the first to go and congratulate the owners. Moose, do you echo our sentiments with regards to the track, or, or, or do you think he'll be able to get over that? What are your chances with uh, your, your thoughts on Billy Bowlegs? Yes, you know, it, um, obviously July is also a race ran with tactics as a rider on top, and um, I don't know if Sean's had enough time to have a relationship with the horse. He's a horse I've managed to win two races on him, and uh, he's a horse that you kind of have to know him. He's quirky. You can't fire him up because he can over-race, and you also can't be in the July, be in a place where you're losing your position. The first 
400 meters going into the first turn. So has he had enough relationship with the horse to, to get the best out of him? That's the one keynote for me that I have to bring to attention. But in terms of him being a, to deserve his place, yes, yes, he has. I'm not so sure about his prep. I think his, his prep hasn't been that great, but obviously a lot of guys, a lot of trainers do try to avoid penalty races to get points. But uh, he does deserve his place. He was an, I thought he was um, out of his ground in the, in the derby in Joburg, which I thought he could have just about won in the right position. Definitely deserves his place here. But I'd rather have him for a place than a win bet. Okay, so there we go. Billy Bowlegs, a place chance more than a winning one. And uh, that is uh, Billy Bowlegs. Okay, we're going to talk to Samanga about uh, the next horse. And uh, after do it again, we'll get Smunga's opinion. We'll go and see it again. We'll be moozy. And we're just going to alternate like that and do it again. Well, I've had arguments. I've had debates. People have told me, do it again. We'll, we'll do it again. People say, do it again. Won't do it again. He's a champion, Samunga. We know that. What are your thoughts about do it again? Because I'm not really in his camp, to be honest. I want to put him in my quartet, etc., but I won't be backing him for the win. He's a very nice individual, big, massive stride. Um, I, I once, um, not so long, I, I think about um, early this year, I, I, I was going to um, uh, uh, ride him. Uh, I went to take him at the track. He's, he's such a lovely horse to actually uh, to work with, you know. But um, it, as, as long as they sound, and uh, they they enjoying racing. I think they they always they always have a chance. But this race, yeah, uh, you know, he is no stranger to this race, and uh, I I wouldn't leave him out. But having said that, I, I was, you know what? You, you saw his gallop. He was moving beautifully, stretching beautifully, and he's a sound and happy horse. You you can't really leave him out. It's still. He can do it again. He can. <laughs> yeah, he can do it again. Samanga says he can do it again. Okay, that's the uh, twice over for Nick Johnson, Bernard Cantor, and Nancy Hossack. We're now going to talk about See It Again, horse number seven from the Michael Roberts stable, and we're going to focus the spotlight on Muzi with regards to See It Again, uh, the Colt by twice over for Nick Johnson. Every time, Muzi, I see Mr. Michael Roberts, I ask, how's the big boy? He said he's good, he's getting better and better, he's happy, he's healthy, he's eating well. Uh, they're very confident. He is my firm first choice. Personally, I, I think they're going to have to go some to beat him. Oh, well, I make him the horse to beat. Let me put it to you that way. I make him the horse to beat. What is your opinion on See It Again? No, I truly respect your opinion, Warren. Uh, we've been racing for years, and uh, you, alongside him, you saw me grow up in the game. And, um, you know, we look at horses and we talk about specimens and uh, he's a real, real specimen of a horse. He can shoulder the weight. He's almost the size of Do It Again. They're, they're cousins or something like that. So he can shoulder the weight. He's got everything that you need. He can he, the, the pace doesn't need to be on for him to quicken. Uh, the faster, the better for him. So he is a class package. Like you said to him, he's got, he's got a champion jockey, a multiple champion jockey who will have him in the best position. He won't be flustered with whatever's going around him. And the, he's obviously, it's just confidence is in him. So this horse for me is the horse to beat. We all have to beat him. And I want to be at least five lengths ahead of him <laughs> to give myself any chance to beat him. But uh, he is generally the horse to beat. Okay, the horse to beat, uh, according to Muzi, uh, which is see it again, currently trading. Let's have a look, see it again, 3.5, 4.25 you get tonight, 4.25 on see it again. I might go and have a little tickle at 4.25. Bling, Silver Darling, Drakenstein Stud, Justin Snaith, JP Funder Madva, uh, horse number eight, drawn eight with 55 kilograms. Uh, she hasn't won for a little while, but she's ultra consistent, Silver Darling. Yes, very uh, consistent. Uh, the, last, the last time, um, uh, I think she, she, she didn't get a, a, a way through early and um, she, she, she got in a, um, she got in, in, in a little bit of trouble and JP managed uh, to, uh, to get her back 
get her back again to um, finish a good third, you know, finishing a length, um, a length uh, behind Rainy Hall. And you, you look at the race, it was, as Muzi said, a lot of horses, uh, there was a lot of bungee jumpy there, and it just, you, you, you sort of like, did she have enough? But uh, for me, when I went past them, they were they were already had enough, and uh, now she's going to two. For me, it's a little bit of a question mark. Um, has she done enough to uh, be in this race? Um, you know, she's ran with all the all, all, all the best uh, horses here, but uh, she's just just short of um, uh, of herself to just g gain that win. You know. Yeah. That's number eight, Silver Darling, and I agree with Samanga's opinion. She's there, she's thereabouts, but she just hasn't stepped that bit more to get past the winning post. So I'm happy to pass Silver Darling by, and judging by Samunga's comments, he is too. S let's have a look at the odds about Silver Darling. 40 to 1, you can get 50 to 1 tonight. Now we talk to, to big race rider Muzi Yeni uh, about Son of Raj, and Son of Raj is by Duke of Marmalade out of a black Middleouche mare, Stephen Chetty, the owner, the most passionate wonderful man you'll meet Stephen Chetty and uh, Waiho Mowing the trainer and Muzi Yeni the rider tell us about your horse tell us about your tell us about everything son of Raj yes I've managed to put a few workouts on him and uh, he's a talented uh, young good stamina sort of horse Duke of Marmalade out of Irish me um, just to say this I'm just gonna focus on the positives about this horse He's lightly weighted. He's got a very good draw, which will suit his running style. And um, he's got all the stamina in the world. As you've known also, we've had a lot of rain in Durban. And uh, it's going to be a testing track on Saturday. And uh, I've got the horse with the light weight, the stamina. I give him a real, real big chance for the first four. Obviously, I think he can pull it off to win if the race works out when lack of running. Obviously, I've got healthy respect, like I said, Sierra again, the class horses. I can't have them too close to me because they can out sprint me. But if the race unfolds into me and I can actually be in a position where I am five lengths ahead of them, I think I might be hard to pick back. Absolutely wonderful talk to hear about uh, uh, Son of Raj from Mersey. And I, not just saying it because he's here and because Stephen Chetty's a great friend of mine, not saying it at all. I do give Son of Raj a bit of a chance. And how wonderful it will be for anyone to win the Hollywood Bets Derby in July. But it will be lovely for Muzi or Samanga. But Sana Raj is who we're talking about now. And the spotlight is on Sana Raj. Muzi Yeni going to be doing his very best to bring home the uh, 2023 Hollywood Bets Derby in July. Son of Raj. Dave the King. Horse number 10, Dave the King. For Mike DeCock, Craig Zaki. Now here's a horse, Samanga, that... I thought galloped very well, I know. Safe Passage didn't have the blinkers on. He's not the greatest workhorse, etc. But he galloped very well, Dave the King. I had a long chat to Mike de Kock, And his only concern is the 2,200 meter uh, distance. But I think he's a big runner, Dave the King. Obviously, um, I'm, uh, I'm actually um, with the Dave the King camp. Um, he galloped really, really well. Uh, and I, I spoke to Craig um, uh, past, uh, past of this week. And, um, He's, he was really, really happy with the gallop. And, um, you know, this horse here, yeah, I think if he can just settle. But obviously, this race, is, it's, um, you have to come out and get position as quick as you can. But if, if he can settle, he definitely will see out the 2-2. Two -two. I think the last run, he was just being chased by um, uh, another horse, you know. I think it just made him uh, to do a little bit much, too much early. And uh, you know what? There wasn't um, there wasn't much margin at the end. Uh, at the end of the race, obviously the winner uh, came with a late rattle. And um, you know, I think this horse here, if he can just settle, he's a big runner. I'm on, I'm definitely at Dave uh, at Dave the King um, uh, camp. Yep. Okay, so there we go. Samanga so Kamalo, uh, a Dave the King fan. He's in Dave the King's camp to run an absolute cracker in the Hollywood Bets Durban July. The spotlight's going to go back to Muzi now because we're going to talk about Johan Janssen van Fieren's horse that's going to be ridden by Keegan de Mello, Puerto Manzano. I saw a, a, a f some footage on social media. He looks exceptionally well, this horse Puerto Manzano. He is a good horse. I give him a chance. He's not my first choice. 
Yes, uh, he's had a sensational she season up in Joburg. Uh, he's lo he loves that uh, stand side track. I've got to say well done to Jan. They've done phenomenal. Uh, Lauren, Mr. Werner's for Mark. Really, has been a sensation. I think he's banged two group two, two group ones this season, and he's one of the few horses in this race that actually won two group ones. Whether the track will suit him and whether he can out quick and see it again, what a question from, the, from his racing style. That's my only reserves. But in terms of well-being and the horse being impressive and showing a good lease of life, I gotta say to him, he deserves his place in the race. He should be very competitive, but to, to get on, across the line first, I can't have him to win the race. Okay, it's all about opinion, that's what it is. And uh, yeah, he's a lovely horse, he's a smart horse, but as Muzi says, to get past the line in first, he says no, I say no, but it's just merely an opinion. 11 Porto Manzano, 20 to 1 shot. Right now, extended boosted odds, <coughs> you'll get 25 to 1 about Porto Manzano. Back to bling, back to bling, hey, that rhymes, back to bling. Pakaya, awkwardly drawn, has 53 on the back for Justin Snaith, Grant for Niekirk, the Duke of Richmond Syndicate. He's a good horse, the stable are very upbeat. Very nice horse, um, I had uh, a chance to put a leg over him, it was a massive indi individual. Um, the white draw, I think the weight is on, it's on his, it's, uh, on his favor. Um, I, I, I believe this was, uh, uh, makes it look very easy, you know. And uh, Grant and this horse, they have such a great, great re uh, relationship. Um, you know, he doesn't pull. He's a type of horse you can sit him in at the back and then, you know, uh, uh, fire him up uh, 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 when you, whenever you need him. And um, if the stable is up between him, the guys out there, the deep pockets, they mustn't leave him out, you know. Okay, yep. Don't leave Pakaya out is uh, Samanga Kamala's uh, opinion, and I agree with him. Good looking horse, good form, he's got ability, the stable are upbeat. Don't leave him out. Okay, so Pakaya is a must, gets the tick from us. Let's move on, uh, Muzi, to number 13, a second base. This is for recently married Robin Clarson, now Robin Peter. And uh, Chase Majan's going to ride. They do have an awkward draw to overcome. This is for New Atlas Racing and Mr. Stinky Poe, who is a wonderful friend of racing and a wonderful friend of ours. And wow, that was an outstanding run last time. First run for the new stable. Yes, what a cracker. Well done to uh, Robin for a phenomenal job and uh, turning the form around. Yeah, it's, um, it was a cracker last time. But my biggest problem is I'm concerned about the prep. Um, unlucky loser to not win the, ch the Champions Challenge. But I'm just concerned about the track and um, obviously um, Robin is taking on some classy trainers and you want the prep to be showing you that you're coming into the race giving us all confidence and just a little bit concerned with my pre prep. So for, so for me, it's a little bit of a no. And also, you know, at, um, just speaking to Monty as an agent, he's saying Chase will be ro rocking up there as his first ride on the day without t uh, having a good run on the track and a feel on the track. Not that that is an exact science, but you always also, as a jockey, you want to have that warm-up feel, try have an idea how the track is running, where to make your runs. So, but for Chase, I hope he can pull it off. But for me, just a lot of question marks, so not for me. A yeah, lot of question marks about uh, a second base. Good point that uh, it's going to be Chase's first ride on the day. Very good point that Muzi makes because this, uh, he's quite right. You want to go around, you want to see the track, you want to go and see what it's all about and get a feel a couple of races before. But it's uh, a certainly a valid point, second base. I'm just having a look. Second base is 40 to 1. You can get 50 to 1 tonight. Rascalian, uh, sorry, not Rascalian, my apologies. Uh, safe passage. Let's go and talk about the Silvano Gelding, Drakenstein Stud, Mike de Kock, Christoph Simeon. And uh, safe passage, for me, I far prefer the stable companion. Definitely. Um, obviously, uh, they, they galloped together, and there was, uh, uh, there was a bit of uh, where Safe Passage could have, it could have gone a little bit better, but um, there's a lot of questions where, oh, he didn't have blinkers. I have ridden him, I've won on him before he even had blinkers, and um, he, he always he always gave me a good feel. I think uh, there was uh, one big race uh, in Joburg. 
uh, that I won with him and uh, his, his work that, that week was, was unbelievable and I even gave uh, to the people that uh, it's safe to, 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 to go past the passage, you know, and uh, uh, he, came, he came home, he came home um, uh, easily. So the way he, he, he galloped, uh, it's a little bit a uh, question mark for me, because as I said, I know he's, he's uh, way better than that. And uh, I think uh, Christoph, yes, uh, he, you know, he, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a top guy, and you know, but you just need a horse underneath you, which will help him. And uh, already here, yeah, the guys, we're all coming to looking for position. And if you have a horse that's not uh, looking to take part, it's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit tough because. Uh, he, 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 was, he was quite, he, you know, he had a soft spot in my heart b uh, uh, once, once before. And, uh, s you know, obviously he had a low injury which uh, set him back. And from then, after the injury, he hasn't been the same horse, you know. Um, but if, um, if Mr. Decock has um, uh, 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 turned over the tables and, uh, you know, fixed him up, I'm... And then we can get the old safe passage. But uh, on a gallop, um, um, I'm, I'm going to stay out. <laughs> yeah, well, I agree with uh, Samanga Kamalo on the gallop and, and on current form, etc. Uh, we're happy to stay out uh, with safe passage. And uh, one of the long shots, well, not that long a shot, 10 to 1 about safe passage. And they, they're offering you 10 to 1. So that may be a printing error, but uh, 10 to 1 is the current odds. And there's the boosted odd of 10 to 1. So uh, when you go to the counter, just double check that if you're a Safe Passage fan. But we're of the opinion that we far prefer Dave the King. Let's go and talk about Rascalian with Moosey. Uh, this is uh, for Mar Shirtliff and Bryn Russell. And Rascalian's trained by Vaughan Marshall, Corne or for the pilot. Obviously number 15, drawn 15th. I don't know what to make of Rascalian anymore. He's a good looking horse. He's got ability. But every time I go for him, he lets me down. When I don't go for him, he comes and runs a good race. I don't know. Help us with Rascalian. I just want to give the public an idea how good this horse is. Um, he got beaten by Jet Dark in the mid at level weights by two lengths. And um, he has suffered bad interference, which he looked like he could have won, barring the interference. So you can just imagine at level weights. If Jet Dark was in this race, it would be even money. Uh, maybe even yeah, even money. And second run, his first run here in Durban from Mr. Marshall, he gave Pakaya seven and a half kilos. He got beaten a length. So in his prep run. So his last run was a second run after a rest. He looked like he got caught up quite handy with the hot pace and he just flattened it, but it was a second run after a run. It's his third run, it's his peak run. And you must remember this race has always been an argument between the three year olds and the older horses. Yes. He's very close with the horse like um, the favorites here again. There's uh, a kilo in between them, which I don't think he should be that close. This was a massive runner. The only concern is, um, is Kone coming into the race with a lot of good form as a jockey, as a rider? Will he, be, will he be cool, calm and collected to do what he needs to do to bring this horse home? So that's a question mark for me. But he definitely is horse, one of my horses which I give a massive chance ridden correctly and luck of running there we go ridden correctly and luck of running massive chance given to rascalian from muzi yeni and he speaks some very valuable points about rascalian and uh, 16 to 1 is rascalian's price and tonight you can get 20 to 1 if you're a rascalian fan well clearly muzi is trip of fortune horse number 16 for candace bass robinson elder domeyer some say well a late entry some say it won't uh, run well, some say will run well. I'm not really in his camp. Uh, um, how do you see it? Um, obviously, you know, uh, I think um, uh, he's a great miler. Yes. Uh, over 1,600, uh, 1,400, you know, you can't, you can't um, uh, uh, put a blind eye on him. But, uh, you know, 2,200 meters, it's a, it's a lot for this guy. And, uh, I, I, I feel, as you say, um, he might have been a, a late entry. Um, it, it's just that he made it in, and it's just one of those, you know. Um, I don't, I don't believe that there has been like plans uh, uh, 
even prior before, they never took him further than uh, further than a mile, yeah. and um, yeah, I think it's just nice to have him running in, in, a, race, in yeah. a race. Yeah. Okay, that's number 16, Trip of Fortune. Yeah, we're on the fence with him. Let's have a look at his odds, Trip of Fortune. 40 to 1, a Trip of Fortune, but tonight they'll give you 50 to 1. Boosted odds, 50 to 1, Trip of Fortune. We're not really in his camp. What I'm going to do, if you don't mind, is uh, stick with Samanga, because the next horse is Rain in Holland. Uh, and once we've spoken about Rain in Holland, the parting shot will come from Mersey with pomp and power. Then we'll get their selections or their list, their first four horses that they like. I'll give you my first four and uh, we'll wrap it up. But Bling, to stay with you, Rain in Holland. You, you ride her so beautifully. She runs so well. She, she's just a, a fantastic filly. And, and again, it's all about opinion, having chatted with so many people. She's definitely, again, I'm not saying it because you're sitting here, you'll see in every publication that I've got her name on my list, on my short list. I, I, I think she's a runner. I, I really do. But you tell us more. She's such a good filly. And she's doing really well. Um, uh, on uh, Tuesday morning, I went to do a final workout on her, and I could never be happier. Um, even Mr. Terry, he said, don't worry. The, you know, obviously, Joe will... Uh, uh, the winter coat, you know, and all that. He said, don't worry about the winter coat. Uh, by the time uh, the day comes, you will see a different horse. And um, I, um, he asked me, was I happy with the workout? I told him, definitely. Yeah, she just blew, blew me away, you know. But my concern will be the draw. I have 16 other guys on my inside that, uh, that wants to m make similar... Uh, um, uh, 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 adjustment to, uh, to the race as me but she can get strong uh, um, the first time I rode uh, um, I came up the gates I thought I had her and she just went with me and uh, I came back I said to Mr. Terry sorry he said but you won I said oh, that wasn't the plan <laughs> so she, if she if, if she just set, uh, relaxes a little bit I don't mind being three deep you know, um, there's many, many good horses that have uh, won this race being three deep. And uh, there's many other horses that have won this race from um, uh, the deep draw. So um, she's really well. Mr. Terry's happy. I'm happy. You know what? Uh, I'm, I had to re try and re retain the title. So there's a lot of pressure. But um, having said, um, you know, I'm, I'm worried about the draw. But within herself, she's in a great space. I can never, Mr. Terry and I can never be happier. Well, uh, that's Samanga Kamalo's thoughts on rain in Holland. And, uh, yeah, uh, the draw, the way if she does, if she needs to settle, etc. Clean run race. But she's good. She's good. She's good. What is she trading at, rain in Holland? 15 to 1. Tonight they give you 18 to 1 about rain in Holland. The last horse to talk about before we get some selections or a short list, call it what you like, is number 18, Pomp and Power. And Muzi's going to talk us through Pomp and Power. He's by Verse and Getrix for Greg Bortz, Etienne Braun, and Marsh Shirtliff, Justin Snaith, the, the uh, trainer, and uh, Bernard Faderherb Jetson to town to ride Pomp and Power. Now, he's, we know that he's, Justin was in my office yesterday, and he said the horse is as strong as an ox, a bit mad, things have got to go right for him. But on his day, he can run this horse. Yes, definitely. You've got all the talent in the world. Just uh, his temperament is not great. That's uh, a bit of his downfall. But I think his horse, that, that draw 18, could be what he just needs. Because if he over races, I can't see Bernard looking to fight with him. And it's not a race where you want to be fighting with the horse. So I think where he's drawn could be an assist for him to help him settle. Or yeah, I'm sure you'll find horses like Rain in Holland to be behind and follow or ended up, you know what I mean? If it's three deep and he's settled, I think he can be very, very competitive. And just my concern with him, the reason why I can't have him as my first selection, is just I'm not, happy, I'm not quite convinced with his prep, though he's got a great conditioner, Mr. Snaith, but uh, just his prep is a little bit off for me. And um, obviously Bernard is as much as he's a talented rider and I think he can get along with the difficult tools. I don't know if he's had a time to gel with those. So a little bit of negatives for me. So a lot to um, just not 
for winning for me. Many, many questions to answer, and things have really got to go as well. I understand exactly what Muzi is saying with regards to number 18, Pomp and Power. And on his day, he could certainly make his presence felt, but if he overboils and things don't go right, he certainly can't place if, if that happens. But if things go his way, he could certainly be in the money. Okay. That is our assessment on the 18 runners for the Hollywood Bets Durban July. We're going to give you, I'm going to ask the gentleman for four horses. Uh, obviously, you want to win. Obviously, you're hoping to win. But just the four horses, whether you put yours at the top of the list or on third or at the bottom of the list, I'm going to ask for four horses that punters uh, must include in their quartets and, of course, that they must respect. Horses that we like. And I'll start with me just to give you both a moment because I've done this two weeks ago already. My four horses for the Hollywood Bets Durban July. Seven, see it again. Ten, Dave the King. Nine, Son of Raj. And 17, Rain in Holland. And Son of Raj and Rain in Holland, of course, because I've got my two brothers on either side of me. Uh, I, I certainly hope they do well. And I've included them in all my bets. But... Uh, Seven, see it again from Dave the King. Healthy respect for Rain and Holland and healthy respect for Sana Raj for our colleagues on either side. But Bling, have you got your four, list of four ready? Um, yes, uh, Warren. Uh, I'll, I'll go two, um, ten, and um, seventeen, fifteen. Two, ten, seventeen, fifteen. That's without question. Dave the King, Rain and Holland, and Rascalian. Two, 10, 17, 15. Those are Bling's four numbers. And Mr. Muzi Yeni, your four numbers, please. Yes, um, and I'll stick to my guns. The horse we all have to beat. See it again. What a question being drawn so well. My next selection, Mao, son of Raj, purely just of a lot of positive he's got. And uh, Riskalian, just because he's an older horse and uh, he's quite close at the way to the three year olds, must be a runner. 2, 9, and 15. Those are Muzi's numbers. 7, 2, 9, and 15. Well, it gives me great pleasure to talk again about Muzi Yeni and Samanga Kamalo. Lovely to have been with them. It's a busy, busy week for everybody in racing. But Samanga, and to, to you, Muzi, for all the great rides you give us, for all the excitement on the racetrack, all the good interviews, thank you. Thank you for your time tonight. We wish you all the very, very best for the big race. We wish you for the, the best for every race, health and safety, and uh, may the best horse and may the best man win. And, and thank you to both of you. Thank, thank you, Warren. Uh, can't thank you enough. I want to thank uh, Track and Ball, Gold Circle, Gallup TV, um, just the whole crowd for giving us their moment and their ear. Obviously, we just come from uh, racing analysis. I'm sure at the back, the punters do know more than us at most times. So just thanks for the ear and allowing us to come out here. Bling, yes, it's uh, been wonderful. Definitely, uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks to Trek and Ball, and uh, thanks to Tab, and uh, obviously Caleb TV. And uh, we all there just to do the best that we can, and uh, this is what we enjoy doing, riding horses, and uh, we can only, we can only sh share a little bit of information from uh, Jockey's uh, 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 side view. And uh, the guys out there, they, they have to still make up their minds. And, uh, you know, we just, um, we're, just giving, we're just giving what, uh, what we think. And knowing and uh, the little bit of knowledge with the horse and how everything supposed to be planned out. I wish I, wish I was riding sparkling water. <laughs> and it would have been easy, but <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with the filly. And I've done well with the filly last year. So, uh, yeah. To the guys out there, hope you get the right ones and uh, uh, good night. Whoop, whoop. Now, before you say good night, before we go, I, I want you to show the punters you, you've got a lovely, what is that called? That flash. Do that for us. Do that for us. Mosey Yerny, there he is. That's what he's going to hopefully be doing on Saturday. And uh, everybody in the room, I want to see if you can make the right whoop whoop. Uh, we want to know if you can make a noise. So on the count of three, I want to see if the man who invented whoop whoop is happy with the whoop whoop he gets from the crowd here. So on the count of three, I'd like everybody in the room to shout whoop whoop. So on one, two, three. No, not a great effort. Eh? It's <laughs> from Warren Linferno, Graham Hawkins, and the entire team here at, at uh, Track and Ball, the finishing post. Lovely to be your host and lovely to be with you. Punt well 
And as always, thank you for your support, because without the punter, we certainly couldn't do it.